Okay, so YouTubers, like, are you out there, have you ever felt like, you know, you're putting in the work, but no one's really seeing it? It's like you're talking to a brick wall sometimes. Right, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. is this thing even on? Yeah. Well, good news today, we're diving deep on how smaller channels can actually get more views. Yeah, because we've got some seriously interesting intel here from other creators who are figuring this out. And the best part is it seems like YouTube itself might actually be on our side for once. It really does feel like a shift, right? Right. They're finally recognizing that fresh voices matter. Totally. Because for a while there, it felt like the big guys were calling all the shots. Right. And it was getting harder and harder to break through the noise. But the sources that we're looking at today suggest that YouTube is actively trying to make things fair. It's about time, right? Okay, but I got to ask, like, how do we know this is for real? Well, one of the sources we're looking at is actually from a YouTube insider, Todd. Okay. He's the head of Discovery. So he basically decides which videos get recommended to which viewers. Oh, wow. So he's got his hands on the algorithm. He does. And get this. He says that they have entire teams dedicated to helping small creators succeed. No way. Are they serious? Yeah. Wow. They're literally tracking how many new channels are hitting milestones every single day. Mm. Like how many are getting to 300 subscribers. So they're like really keeping score out there, huh? They are. And it shows they're invested in helping new creators grow. Okay. So it sounds like they're putting their money where their mouth is. But how do we as creators actually take advantage of that? Well, it all starts with understanding how viewers, mm. especially viewers who are checking out a smaller channel for the first time, how they behave differently. Okay. So what do you mean by that? Think of it like uh, like walking through a farmer's market, right? You're naturally drawn to the booths that already have a crowd. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's like, well, if everyone else is excited about it, it must be good. Exactly. I'm... Social proof is everything. Okay. So as a small channel, we need to figure out ways to build that same hype, even if we don't have a massive following yet. Exactly. It's all about authenticity, being genuinely passionate about your content and your audience. Yeah, they can totally tell if you're faking it. Yeah, you want to foster that we're in this together kind of vibe. Right, like we're all friends here, hanging out, talking about, you know, desert skiing or whatever your channel is about. Exactly. And a lot of the creators mentioned seeing comments like, this channel deserves way more views. Yeah, you know, like help them out algorithm. Right. Yes. And that's a good sign that you're building the right kind of energy. Okay, so speaking of standing out, one concept that came up a lot was this idea of a video outlier. Right. Have you heard of this? Yeah. It sounds kind of mysterious and exciting. Like, what is a video outlier? Is that like a rare species of YouTube video? Kind of. It's basically when one of your videos just explodes way more views than anything you've ever posted. So it's like a mini viral hit. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. But what's really interesting is that these creators are saying that you don't have to just get lucky with outliers. Wait, really? There's a strategy to going viral? Apparently. So... It starts with understanding why certain videos in your niche tend to go viral. So you're saying there's a method to the madness that is YouTube virality. I'm all ears. Right. So it all starts with the topic you choose. Oh, okay. One creator who had an outlier video about skiing in the desert talked about finding those topics that are kind of unexpected. Okay. But still super relevant to your niche. So you're not like abandoning what you do. You're just finding a fresh take on it that makes people go, huh. Exactly. You've got to tap into that curiosity gap that makes people want to click. I like it. Okay, so you've got a killer topic now. What? Well, even with a great topic, you got to keep people hooked. Oh, for sure. Another source used the example of a video about Mr. Beast's secrets to success. Okay. But they made the mistake of revealing the secret right at the start. Oh, no. Talk about a buzzkill. I know, right? you got to build that anticipation. Yeah. Make them wait for it. Keep them on the edge of their seats. Exactly. It's all about storytelling. Storytelling 101 for you two. Exactly. And that's where editing comes in. God. You could have the best content in the world, but if the editing is sloppy... People are going to bounce. They're gone. It's like putting on a fashion show with mismatched shoes. No one's going to pay attention to the clothes. Love that analogy. Okay, so we've got great content. We've edited it like a Hollywood masterpiece. What about the description? Oh, the description, don't even get me started. Because that's another thing. I feel like we just kind of slap something together and hope for the best. Right. But one of the sources gave some seriously good tips on how to optimize that little box for maximum impact. Okay, because that's prime real estate. The first thing people see before they even hit play. Exactly. Treat those first, like, 95 characters like they're solid gold. 
Okay. That's what shows up in the search results without people having to click see more. So it's like our one shot to make a good first impression. It is. So make sure you're using the right keywords, the terms that people are actually searching for. Keywords are key, but don't forget to make it sound like a human wrote it too. Right. You're not writing a robot manifesto. Exactly. And don't be afraid to promote your other videos in the description too. Yes. Create that choose your own adventure experience. Keep them clicking. It's all about keeping them on our channel for as long as possible. Exactly. And you know what else YouTube's been cooking up to help us out? Okay, lay it on me. This new feature called Hype. Hype. Okay, that sounds promising. Tell me more. So imagine you're watching a video and you love it. Right. But instead of just liking it, you can hype it. Ooh, so it's like a super, like... It's yeah. exactly like a super, like, designed to boost smaller channels. I'm listening. And here's the kicker. Every viewer only gets three hypes per week. Oh, wow. So they're going to use them wisely. Exactly. They're only going to hype the videos that they really, really love. And the more hypes a video gets, the higher it climbs on this special leaderboard, giving it way more visibility. Okay, now this is what I'm talking about. YouTube's actually putting their money where their mouth is with this. They are. They're giving small creators a megaphone. Love it. Okay, so hype is definitely going in the toolbox. Any other hidden gems we should know about? Well, you know how you usually upload a video and just hit publish? Yeah, pretty much. That's my process. What if I told you you can schedule them to go live at a specific time? Wait, are you serious? I thought everyone was just setting their alarms for like 3 in the morning to catch different time zones. Nope. You can schedule it and sleep like a normal person. Okay. My mind is blown. So how does scheduling strategically help? Well, once you know your audience a little better, like when they're most active on the platform, okay, you can time your videos to drop right when they're online. So if I'm seeing most of my views coming in around like 7 p.m., I should schedule my uploads for like 6.45. Exactly. <laughs> You're working with the algorithm, not against it. Oh, okay, I'm liking this. And then there's this little setting that a lot of people don't know about. It's the publish to subscriptions feed and notify subscribers option. Okay. Um, yeah, I feel like that's one you would want turned on. Like, why wouldn't you want to tell your subscribers about a new video? Right. But here's the thing. If you post a lot of different types of videos. Okay. And someone subscribed for a very specific reason. I see where you're going with this. <laughs> blasting them with a notification about something totally different might actually work against you. Yeah, if someone subscribed to my channel for, like, my travel vlogs, they probably don't care about my sourdough bread baking experiment. Exactly. Yeah. It's all about being strategic thinking about each viewer and what they want to see. Okay, this is all great, but how do we find those outlier videos in the first place? Oh, I'm so glad you asked because there's this little hack that one of the creators mentioned. Uh, okay. It uses this tool called vidIQ. vidIQ, okay, yeah, I've heard of this, but I've always been a little intimidated by it, to be honest. I know, it can seem kind of overwhelming, uh -huh. but trust me, it's a game changer. They have this tool that analyzes millions of videos and basically acts as like a viral video detector. Okay, so it can tell me which videos are going to go viral before they actually go viral. Not quite. Yeah. But it can show you which videos are overperforming for channels that are similar in size to yours. Hold on. So you're saying I can see exactly which videos are crushing it for channels like mine. That's kind of like cheating, isn't it? It's not cheating. It's like having a secret weapon. Yeah. You can literally see their outlier score, like how much better a video is doing than their average. Okay. You can see their title, the thumbnail, even the tags they're using. It's all right there. So I can like reverse engineer their success and use it for my own channel. Exactly. It takes all the guesswork out of it. Okay, that's amazing. But honestly, it kind of feels like I'm stealing their secrets. Not at all. Think of it as inspiration. You're learning from the best and then putting your own unique spin on it. Okay, that makes me feel better because honestly, I'll take all the help I can get. Who wouldn't? Right? Creator life is all about working smarter, not harder. Tell me about it. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground here, but one thing I still don't get is how some creators are getting monetized after posting like one video. Oh yeah, the pre-monetized channel game. Yeah, because I thought you needed a gazillion subscribers and enough watch time to qualify for like a Netflix special before you could even think about making money. Traditionally, yes. But some savvy creators have figured out a way to skip the line. Okay, how? So there are companies out there that basically build up YouTube channels to meet all of those monetization requirements, yeah. you know, the subscriber count, the watch time, all of that. Right. And then they sell them to creators who are ready to start making money right away. So instead of spending years trying to build up my channel from scratch, I can just buy one that's ready to go. Pretty much it's like a shortcut to YouTube stardom. Wow. 
That's kind of brilliant when you think about it. It is. It lets creators focus on what they do best, which is creating awesome content. Because let's be real, when you're not constantly stressed about hitting those monetization goals, you're free to be more creative. Exactly. You can take risks, yeah. experiment, have more fun, and that energy translates to your viewers. Totally. Okay, so we've talked about a ton of different strategies and tools, but it feels like the main takeaway here is that YouTube success isn't just about luck or algorithms. It's about being passionate being strategic, and being willing to try new things. 100%. You got to be willing to put in the work, but you also got to be smart about it. Exactly. And who knows, maybe your next video will be the one that blows up and launches you into the YouTube stratosphere. It's the dream, right? It is the dream. But even if we don't all become the next Mr. Beast, I think the important thing is to create content that we're proud of content that connects with people. Couldn't agree more at the end of the day. That's what really matters. Absolutely. Well said. Well said on that note. YouTubers, get out there and make some magic happen. And remember, you don't have to do it alone. We're all in this together. We are. Until next time, keep creating.